Hello everyone and welcome to the MTU Cork School of Music online open evening. My name is Tom Doyle, I'm the Conservatoire Coordinator at the school and tonight along with my fellow colleagues we will present the four undergraduate programmes on offer at the school and give an insight into student life here at MTU Cork School of Music. Our schedule for this evening will begin with a brief introduction and an overview of the campus before I hand over to my colleagues Anne and Trina who will lead on the BA in Theatre and Drama Studies programme. At half past seven there will be a presentation on the Bachelor of Music, at eight o'clock the BA in Musical Theatre and then at half past eight the BA in Popular Music. And throughout this webinar, please do let us know if you have any questions or queries through the Q&A function here in the Zoom webinar. And we'll try our best to respond either through chat or we'll ask and answer live on screen. And also please do check out our website, csm.mtu.ie, for information on our undergraduate and postgraduate courses. MTU Cork School of Music is a 12,900 square metre state-of-the-art facility located in the heart of Cork City on the banks of the River Lee. The school has over 50 studios and classrooms, most of which have a Model, D, a Model B uh, Steinway Grand Piano and the latest iMac computer. The school is home to over a dozen performing ensembles, with performances happening in the Stack Theatre, a 100-seater black box theatre, and the Curtis Auditorium, as you can see in this particular picture, a 385-seater rehearsal hall and performance venue. MTU Cork School of Music is a cultural hub for the city centre with over 400 events taking place, everything uh, from musical performances to theatrical productions, educational workshops, masterclasses and visual art exhibitions to name but a few. The school is also home to the Fleischmann Library on the fourth and fifth floor of the building with wonderful panoramic views of the city centre. And the library houses a vast amount of books, journals, audiovisual material, as well as printed sheet music, research dissertations and specialist collections. Technology is a huge part of life here at Cork School of Music. In addition to our fleet of modern iMac computers, we also have three electronic performance labs, two piano labs, an electroacoustic music centre, a state-of-the-art professional recording studio, which you can see here in this particular photo, and the in-house record label CSM Sounds. Cork School of Music is one of the six campuses that make up Munster Technological University and our campus is a community of over 450 third level students as well as an extensive conservatoire programme. Masterclasses and industry engagements feature heavily across all our pro particular programmes and in particular this photo here is of students on the BA in Musical Theatre uh, degree programme performing at the Finding a Voice Festival in Clonmel last March. The school is also home to a number of student societies, the Glor Choral Society, the Musical Society and Irish Trad Society. And because of our central location, we are very close to a number of important cultural institutions like Cork Opera House and the Everyman Theatre. And of course, close to the city's bustling nightlife and social scene. So a brief overview of our campus and our city centre location. So, Without further ado, I'm going to hand over to my colleagues Anne Barry and Trina Scott, who are going to lead the presentation on the BA in Theatre and Drama Studies. Thanks, Tom. Good evening to everybody. Good evening, everyone. I'll just bring up our, we're going to share a PowerPoint with you this evening and talk as we talk you through the BA in Theatre and Drama Studies. So I'll just start sharing that there. I hope that everybody can see that now and I'll hand you over to Anne. Thanks Trina and uh, good evening everyone, lovely to be here and uh, dying to tell you all about our degree. Now uh, another lovely image of our school and we just couldn't resist putting up yet another image of it because it is such a beautiful place to work and its proximity as Tom has already said to theatres, performance spaces, art galleries etc and to all of the communities and people who work within those places means that we are just ideally situated. Not to mention that we are right next to the river 
and that one of our classrooms, the drama classroom, looks right out onto that river as well, which I can tell you is pretty special and quite stunning some days. So without further ado, we will get into the nitty gritty of the BA in Theatre and Drama Studies, MT 939. So, you know, what are we all about? What is the essence of our course? So when we were thinking about this, Trina and I decided that we would select this image because it absolutely epitomizes what we're about. It really, I suppose, demonstrates the creativity, spontaneity, experimentation, and I suppose determination and grit that is required to be a student on our course. And just as this student is doing, we want you to reach for the stars. And what we mean by that really is we want you to reach your potential as a person, as a creative artist, and uh, we want you to just love your time here. And we are going to ask you to take risks, to be open to being creative, to be open to being vulnerable, and to be very, very present. I think that's very clear from this image that you need to be present physically, mentally, emotionally, and you need to be willing to step outside your comfort zone. Now, if anybody is feeling somewhat scared or horrified by anything I've said there, you know, uh, don't be because you will have a team of people around you who will guide you, who will support you and who will mentor you through all of this. Um, And as I said, we want you to enjoy your time and to just be open and present and willing to learn and willing to experiment and to play. And hopefully you will have an awful lot of fun um, on this course. So we might just move on then to the next slide. And, you know, very obviously, as you will already know, this is a full time four year honours degree course. Um, When we say full time, as you can pretty much guess from what I've been saying, we mean full time. You need to be really, really fully engaged and present um, all of the time. And You know, I suppose what most of our students would say and graduates would say is the more you put into this course, the more you're going to get out of this course. Um, So it's a course that you should love and you should excel at and that you should find exhilarating, even though it will be challenging, of course, and it requires a lot of input from you now. One, I suppose, of the very exciting things about, you know, studying on this course is that you're going to be in a building with three other degrees, three other performing arts degrees, not to mention MA students in the performing arts and music and drama students uh, who are in both secondary and primary school. So what that means is you are entering into an environment that is incredibly vibrant, creative. um, And when you step into our building, you'll feel the excitement that that just you know, goes along with this creativity, goes along with this talent. Um, you just feel it. You don't have to walk into a performance space, into the theatre. You just feel it as you walk up and down the stairs, as you walk along the corridors. Um, and because you've so many you know, different degrees, um, it just means there's wonderful opportunities for cross fertilization. Um, and later we will also be saying that you know cross fertilization occurs within the building but also outside of the building and across campuses um so we will be looking at that and talking about that a little bit so i suppose the next question is you know what kind of a student what kind of a graduate do we want to send out there into the professional world well we're looking to send out creative artists and what we mean by that are artists who are going to be employed and who are going to get work within the industry of performance, whether and also the production side of theatre and maybe the education side of theatre and so on. Now, we think that you will be employable and that you will be the best creative artist you can be if you are well versed in all all aspects of theatre. So while there's a very heavy emphasis on performance and performance training, we think it is equally important that you are introduced to and that you can also have the option of specialising in things like theatre technology, um, production design and so on. And I know Trina is going to talk you through all of the kind of or many of the different aspects of theatre that you're going to be studying, because our argument is you will be a better theatre artist, a better designer, a better performer, a better theatre technology person, if you are well versed in all aspects of theatre and you will, of course, as I have just mentioned, be far more employable. So you'll have a diverse 
uh, range of skills. You'll have a very wide um, you know, skill set. Uh, you'll have many tools in your toolbox, many strings to your bow. Very cliched, but so, so important if you want to work and excel in the in the industry. Um, so before we go into the real nitty gritty of the degree, I suppose I'd like to highlight two things, and that is the public productions, which happen in third and fourth year. Incredibly exciting for those involved, for those teaching on it, and of course, for the audiences who come to see the work. And we will be giving you a little flavor of that uh, in a few minutes. And I'd also like to highlight the work placement because um, students are afford the experience when they're studying on our degree to engage in a work placement in the professional uh, world. And, you know, this is something they find hugely rewarding, gives them great insights into what goes on in the professional world, but most importantly, allows them to make connections and to network with professionals within the industry, which will be hugely valuable later on once they have uh, graduated. So Trina, I'll hand you over uh, hand over to you now to to talk through the the ins and outs of the degree. Thanks, Anne. Yeah, so we just thought we'd give you a little bit more detail about the course content. So the course is structured in such a way as in years one and two, students take a lot of performance training modules, ones that Anne has alluded to already, but they also take additional modules. Uh, so in other areas of theatre so that they begin to build this broad skill set that Anne described that makes them ultimately very employable. In years three and four then, students can choose from a wide range of electives, and I'll talk through some of them in a second. Um, again, that sort of adds to their portfolio and their skill set uh, to make them uh, employable. And at this stage, students usually have found things that they're particularly interested in and that they'd like to pursue further. So if we look at the core modules, um, all of them except the final two are modules that all students take in the first two years of their studies. So we have a series of theatre lab, voice, performance ensemble and theatre history and text modules, as well as two modules in theatre technology, costume design module, applied theatre and stage management. Production studies comes into the equation in year three and year four, and the professional portfolio module then is undertaken in the final semester before students leave us to go into the professional world. And this is the module that equips them specifically for that. Moving on now to our second box, there you have the various electives. So there are options in performance, acting in the media, musical theater, sound and lighting design, set design and props, directing, dance, script writing, drama therapy, there's a theatre craft internship option, and also you can choose to do some independent research. Then we'd also just like to bring your attention to the fact there in the final box that all students in the School of Music, drama students included, have the opportunity to apply for modules in music, for example, singing lessons. Um, and they also have access to modules in other departments and on other campuses, things like multimedia, languages and so on. And that's available to them through what's called the free choice module. So I'm going to just return now to the productions that Anne mentioned already. So two public productions take place, one in year three and one in year four. And in this slide and the next few slides, you're going to see posters and photos of previous productions. Um, and I suppose, as Anne has said, these really are the highlights, I suppose, of the programme for many students. Uh, we're all, we all get very excited about these shows and students across the other years also get involved in various ways, helping out in box office and so on. So they really bring the BATDS community together. So most, choose, most of our students choose to perform in these shows. Um, but there are usually a couple who decide that they would rather take on different roles because they have found a passion in another area, such as, for example, directing. So they might be assistant director for the show or maybe a stage manager. That has happened in the past. So we'd like to draw your attention as well to our upcoming 2023 fourth year production, which will be happening next week in the Stack Theatre. It's running from the 18th to the 21st of January. 
and it's called The Wonderful World of Dissocia. And tickets are available online from events.cit.ie. There's a plug. So I suppose if you're interested in the course and you can get to one of the shows, uh, we think that would be a great idea because it would give you a feel for what goes on in the theatre and drama programme. So back to you and to talk about our spaces. Great, Trina. Thank you. So you're looking here at an image of the movement room. So that is one of our nicest uh, spaces. So as you can see with the ballet bars, the mirrors, it's obviously, you know, very suitable for dance. It has a sprung wooden floor, but and of course, lots of dance does go on in there. But an awful lot of classes that are movement based, an awful lot of physical work goes on in this room. And because of its spaciousness, its design, just the light that comes in through the, the windows as well, um, it just seems to really kind of work very well uh, in terms of kind of it allows people to be creative, to play and have a lot of fun in there as well. So it's a beautiful room and really lovely to work in. Um, I mentioned the drama classroom um, at the start. Again, another lovely room, quite different to this one, uh, but has that beautiful view of the river. We also have, of course, dressing rooms, uh, teaching studios. And then, of course, there's the stack theatre. And we're going to take a little look at that now. Um, so I think, uh, Trina, we might move on to the to the next slide of the Stack Theatre when you're ready. Lovely, thank you. So you've had a little look at that, I think, from maybe Tom's slides as well. So this is a black box theatre. It's on the ground floor. And, you know, the joy, I suppose, of a black box theatre is that it's incredibly flexible. So it can be set up in quite a neutral kind of, uh, you know, fairly conservative way here or can be utterly transformed, as we'll see in the next slide. So what we're looking at here is our final year students in a performance of the events, which was uh, directed by Regina Crowley, and they are standing on um, a purpose built stage that actually goes right up behind them as well as underneath them. And it was quite a beautiful stage and it utterly and totally transformed the space. And you know, the thing that amazes me about the stack is that every time I go into a new play or a new production, I have absolutely no idea what kind of world I'm going to enter into. Um, it's just the creativity that um, can go on in there is is just it's it always surprises me. Um, and Tom has already mentioned it has a capacity of 100 um, people and we've often had audiences of 100 in there, but it's also a lovely space if you want to do something much more in kind of intimate and have a, a smaller audience in there. So and we sometimes work in there and have workshops in there as well. And it's, it's just a lovely space uh, to be in. Um, so we'll have a look at some of our other facilities. And again, Tom will have kind of referred to a lot of these, but we have computer labs, practice studios. There is, of course, a student common room, no teachers, no lecturers allowed in there. There's the bistro, there is the library. And then here's another image of the recording studio, which obviously is used by musicians a lot. But of course, it could be the drama students are collaborating with the musicians or using music in their shows. And of course, audio material can be re recorded in there. And the, one of the most recent things as well that our final year students did was to record a radio play in in there so it, it's just a wonderful facility to to have so we'll take a little look then yeah at the library which again has already been mentioned and you know similar to what tom said there you know many many titles theater and drama titles thousands of cds access to online collections uh, which we make a lot of use of 30 computers workstations and again you go up to the top of those stairs and you have a wonderful view of of the city as well but it's it's a it's an absolutely great resource to have uh, as well and i'm going to hand you over to trina at this point so back to you thanks Anne. so here we have an image of a poster um of our recent uh, program, which was a collaborative venture with the Everyman Theatre. So this was this was called Everyman Sparks Industry Insights. Uh, and there you see some of our current first years outside the Everyman after seeing a uh, production. So this was a program of events um, organized by lecturer Irene O'Mara and staff of the Everyman, Sophie Motley, the artistic director, um, and Aoife Clark, stage manager. So they put together a program and it, this allowed our students the opportunity to interact with industry professionals. So it consisted of various, various things, various types of events. So we had a uh, screening, for example, students went to see shows in the Everyman, they attended workshops, they took part in post-show discussions. And then towards the end of the semester, Sophie Motley, the artistic director, facilitated a rehearsed play reading where our students 
kind of got involved in reading a play and thinking about how this play could be put on together with theatre professionals. So that was a very interesting venture for them. Um, and here you see some of the students in the Everyman Auditorium and some of them gathered around there discussing ideas at the play reading with Sophie Motley. And this programme will continue into the second semester and we look forward very much to that. Back to you, Anne. Thanks, Trina. So just to say a little bit more about the work placement module, which I mentioned um, at the start. So this is situated in year three of the degree and it tends to happen towards the end of semester two or very often it runs into the summer months just after semester two is completed. So students engage in a supervised work placement in an appropriate professional environment. So students will work very closely with an experienced and skilled professional and very often they actually get to work with a whole team of professionals. So possible roles might include assistant stage manager, sound lighting operator, um, you, a student might become a member of a costume design team, a member of a production team, um, or maybe if a student is very much interested in workshop facilitation or teaching drama, well then they might shadow and work alongside or even collaborate with a, a professional facilitator or, or drama teacher. Now, the, I suppose, very exciting thing for students is that they can complete their work uh, placement here in Ireland with a company, with a school um, and so on. But they can also go abroad. And obviously, really, one can work within any area of theatre, radio, television. Um, and, you know, you, you can decide what role you would like to take on and so on. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this is an incredibly rewarding experience for students. Um, students are often very pleasantly surprised by, I suppose, they suddenly realize they have an interest in and that they actually have a propensity for working, for example, in stage management, whereas maybe they originally thought they were only interested in performance. So many students come back realizing that they have other options and they have other possible career paths as well. Um, but again, I think probably one of the most important aspects of this placement is, as I mentioned earlier, the connections you're making with professionals within the industry. So it is not unusual for our students, even before they graduate, to be approached by the companies they've worked for or individuals within them. Um, and, and, you know, they're often offered work or they're offered opportunities. Um, and as I said, it's not uncommon for, for, for this to happen before they graduate and, uh, you know, quite soon after graduating uh, as well. Um, so I think that brings us very nicely on to, to employment opportunities um, you know, where might I work once I graduate? So really, you could work in any area within theatre, within television and so on, um, within drama education. So you might end up in performing, directing, uh, in, you might be involved in theatre making, stage management, production management, um, design is also uh, something you might end up working with, could be costume set, lighting, sound design, you could end up working with a casting agency, you could find yourself wanting to uh, get in, I suppose, just involve yourself very much in workshop facilitation that might be with community groups, with different organisations. Um, and obviously, a lot of our students might go on to do postgraduate uh, study as well. Um, just to say, as well, I suppose we, we brought this list together really based on what we're hearing from graduates and really we have graduates working in every single area here. Some of them are very much focused in one area, but we'd have quite a number of people who kind of work between two or three areas as well. But they certainly seem to be getting lots of opportunity and lots of jobs, um, you know, in, in every area in theatre. Thanks, Anne. Um, thanks, Trina. So, yeah, so we're coming to the end of the presentation now. So we just like to kind of sum up again why we think you should study the BATDS at the Cork School of Music. So I suppose if you do choose to study with us, you will be uh, part of a very collaborative, creative, student centred learning environment. You will acquire a wide range of creative, academic and practical skills that are very transferable. You'll be prepared for working as a professional within the industry. You'll get opportunities to be mentored by professionals through work placement, internships and workshops. You'll get the opportunity to perform in two large scale productions. You, and you can be involved, if you wish, in cross disciplinary collaborations with students from the Crawford College of Art and Design or MTU students of film and media in MTU Kerry. We have collaborations with both of those departments. There is an Erasmus exchange possibility with um, a theatre school in Prague. 
called DAMU. And you will also be prepared for a postgraduate study uh, at master's level if you wish to apply for that at a later date. So the application process, I won't go into too much detail now because I think we're running out of time um, and there is information on the web page. Uh, but obviously you have to apply to the CAO by the 1st of February. It's a restricted access course. You must meet these uh, leaving search requirements. Again, they'll be on the website for you, so I won't go through them. Um, just to mention that the date of the in-person auditions is the 11th of March for the BATDS. This consists of a 45 minute approximately group drama workshop, which is usually great fun and warms people up nicely for their individual audition and interview, which follows. Um, and places on the course are allocated according to the points that you're awarded by us for your audition and workshop and not on the basis of your CAO points, uh, as long as you meet the basic leaving search requirements. So I would refer you to our webpage, csm.cit.ie forward slash BATDS. And on that page, you'll find lots of information, information about the application and audition process. There's a promotional video about the BATDS program, which we made recently, which will really give you an insight into what it's like to be a student on this course. Further course information, including a link to detailed module descriptors, and also a video of our 2021 production of Love and Information, which was filmed uh, during COVID. Uh, please do follow us on Instagram for details of further upcoming performances in March, February, March and April. Our handle is at BATDS underscore MTU underscore CSM. And indeed, you can join us on Instagram this Friday, the 13th of January. Lucky for some, though, I'm sure at 5 p.m. for our Instagram live event. So thank you very much for listening to Anne and myself. And if there is time and Tom would like to ask some questions on your behalf, we'd be happy to answer them. Thanks very much. Thank you. That's great, Anne and Trina. Thank you so much uh, for that. Just um, one brief question before we move on uh, to the, the Bachelor of Music uh, programme. Just a question that came in uh, from someone who said, I'm a sixth year student, uh, but I don't have that much experience in acting or in theatre. Um, can I still apply to this course? Yes, yes. That, sorry, that I, I should have mentioned that when I mentioned the audition. That was something we were anxious to get across, but I forgot to say it. Yes, what we're looking for very much uh, is potential. Yeah, so potential, passion, enthusiasm, interest and, and a willingness to work and an openness to, you know, uh, work with us and collaborate with us. So that's the most important thing. Uh, but do your best to prepare for the audition, I'd say to that person. Do meet those requirements with the monologue and so on. And then just try and be open in the room uh, to what is kind of given to you. But definitely not. You don't have to have years of training at all to apply. Yeah, Brilliant. Lovely. Thanks, Mill, for that, Trina. Great. Um, we'll move on, um, I guess, uh, to our uh, next programme. So a huge thanks to Anne Barry and Trina Scott, who are the course coordinators on the BA in Theatre and Drama Studies uh, programme there. Um, we'll just um, allow a minute or two for, for people to arrive um, into, the, uh, in, into the room for the Bachelor of Music course, which will be presented by Maria Judge, Dr. Gabriella Maya and Joan Scannell. Great. I think we'll we'll uh, lead away there. So thank you so much. So this uh, this is the presentation on the Bachelor of Music course here at MTU Cork School of Music. Thank you. Hi everyone. Uh, you're so welcome to our um, our uh, session this evening. Um, and this is just a brief overview of the four courses that um, are running at Level 8 in the Cork School of Music. More information uh, will be available in the in more detailed Instagram sessions um, for the BMOS. It'll be on the 20th of January at five o'clock. So we would love to see you uh, back there then for that. So the MTU Cork School of Music, um, the BMOS is uh, not a BA in music. It's a Bachelor of Music degree. Um, and it is uh, similar to the other four, the other three courses at the school. It's a it's a full time um, 
four year level eight course honors a degree in music. So I suppose what I would normally ask is uh, why you would not choose to study at the BMOs, the BMOs at the Cork School of Music. Um, you know, it's it's as Anne had mentioned with the drama um, course and Trina, it's a purpose built facility. It's a state of the art facility in the centre of Cork City. It's a cultural centre for the actual city itself. We have a lot of um, visiting uh, festivals and performances and lots of opportunities arriving um, in the door with people where they're uh, presenting their concerts in the School of Music and then of course the reciprocal arrangement is where our students are offered a lot of opportunities in the community um, to involve themselves with uh, creative and performing arts activities in the city and further afield. Um, the School of Music course I feel has a couple of in sort of individual features um, that you should think about very carefully when you're choosing your, your course, uh, your college course. Um, so it is in a purpose-built facility. It's not in a refurbished facility. It was actually specifically built um, with the performing arts uh, community in mind. So the rooms are all soundproofed and uh, we invest hugely in structure and also in instruments and in software um, so for to make sure that your course is the most um, up-to-date and most, most professional that it can be we're very invested in making sure that our graduates are ready for industry uh, when they leave here so we don't really want you to come across anything in your working life that you haven't been prepared for in your undergraduate program um, the three main differences i would see with the BMOs at the School of Music to other courses possibly in the country, in Ireland and also in the UK, are that we have we have three um, kind of structural pieces. The first is that there are mandatory modules that go the way through the four years of your course. Um, it's not confining itself to, um, to uh, academic modules in the first year or two, um, but it it, uh, is, it goes the whole way through. Uh, the second difference is you have on-site one-on-one -on -one instrumental provision here in the school. We don't buy in uh, instrumental tuition from elsewhere. Uh, we provide it on-site. And the third big difference is um, that we obviously uh, have a, a huge number of ensembles here in the school that we uh, we there are our own. So we field our own teams. Um, and my colleagues, uh, Gabriella, will speak a lot about the performance opportunities and also Erasmus and Joan then will talk about the performance opportunities with the with the um, the ensembles and with the uh, bands and choirs and orchestras uh, a little bit later on. So, um, but just to, to, I suppose, with those particular blinkers on, I suppose, to see that the actual discourse is unique in the country. Um, it, you you the actual provision isn't isolated in any particular year so we believe in a skills development um you know program whereby you are introduced to things in first year there's a kind of a an advanced um level of learning in second year and then there is expert learning in year three and four with a huge amount of choice in terms of electives um that you can you can kind of structure your own, design your own award so that it follows your area of interest. Um, it's not confined to classical music either. So there's development of other performance styles, those people with um, an interest in tradition music or jazz or composition can uh, can follow their, their passions in that area as well. And we believe that we are preparing people very well for a career after their undergraduate course. So the career paths, um, as I mentioned, uh, it is a performance degree, so you need to be able to play an instrument um, to come into the course and you will continue to play an instrument through the course. Um, so but you can you can choose from or you can uh, elect to join the course under classical jazz or traditional uh, umbrella. Um, you're not confined to that. You can mix and match as you go along, um, but they are the three kind of main streams for performance. So the career paths are not limited to the following performance, education, as you would imagine, music therapy, community music research, um, music technology, radio, early music performance, composition, film music, musical director, gaming industry, arts and main, studio work, collaborative arts projects and tourism. And um, there are many, many more. We have many uh, graduate 
graduates who were very successful in careers that are um, associated, I suppose, with the performing arts, but not necessarily, um, you know, embedded in the traditional um, performance education areas that you, you may think. Um, on the point of education, we are very um, aware, I suppose, that some of you may have an early ambition to teach um, and you need to be registered with Teaching Council to teach in the Irish uh, education sector. So we watch the changes that are, uh, any changes that are happening there very closely. And I can tell you that our BMOS uh, course and also the BAPM course are both recognised by Teaching Council for the purposes of undergraduate uh, programmes so that you can go on to do a professional master's in, in education subsequently um, from our course. Um, so our, um, I think the, the difference with our courses, as I said, we have mandatory core modules that run the whole way through all four years. So you take an element of instrumental studies uh, in year one to four, you can, you can increase that or decrease it if you feel that you would like to spread your areas of interest across other areas. Um, so you need not spend all of your credits, I suppose, in one area, and you're not fixed into that. If you come into the course um, in, you know, in one area, you're not you're not confined to that the whole way through. Uh, we would hope that you would explore all the opportunities that are available to you um, while you're here as a student. Um, so the second pillar, I suppose, is musicianship studies. We believe in the development of your um, your musicianship intelligence and your musicianship persona. Um, so with that in mind, you have some element of ear training, there is composition um, some conducting and also orchestration in there to ensure that you are competent um, to be able to approach anything by the time you get to fourth year. Um, ensemble and repertory is very, very important to us. Uh, we believe that if you play an instrument that you should play in an ensemble, you should follow a leader, you should be part of a team, and you should have the fantastic experience of being part of a a big ensemble that produce, you know, uh, performs the, the major repertoire of the various periods of music along the way. Um, so we have <clears throat> We uh, ensure that you uh, you do that and you get credit as well for your participation in those ensembles um, as you go along. Academic electives, you can read those for yourself. The information is all on the uh, BMOS website, um, on the MTU website and also on the Cork School of Music website. You can see all of the electives that are available. They're not confined to these particular electives. Um, you also have the opportunity to take an elective off another course. So you can take something from drama, you can take something from pop or musical theatre, but also also, you can take something from another course in the Crawford College of Art and Design in photography, you can take uh, language skills, you can take maths, um, anything from the actual MTU um, portfolio of uh, modules um, is, is there available for you. So people are able to pursue their passions um, in that area and to kind of um, bespoke their award so that their award is very individual to themselves when they finish. Performance electives, again, not confined to these particular electives, um, but um, Gabriella will talk a little bit more more about those they're very flexible and they are aimed um, at allowing you to pursue your own level of interest and your own particular area of passion yourself um, so that you get the very very most um, from your course free choice module that just means that you can take a module from another course so in each semester you have five credits to spend that you can use um, either on your own course or you're on something else um, if you would like to do that um, so that is common across all of the courses in the School of Music. So the next slide is to do with um, performing groups. Um, bands, choirs and orchestras are very pr proud of our groups here in the school. And to speak about those, I'd like to pass over to uh, Joan Scannell, who's Head of Orchestral Studies here at the school. Welcome everybody. And um, I'm a huge fan of this course. I wish there had been a BMOS course like this one when I was starting out. Um, you may be coming to study music and you might not even be sure why you're coming to study music. You, Some of you will know that you definitely want to be a performer. You might want to be a teacher. Some of you just aren't ready to finish with music yet. Um, don't be afraid. It's a voyage of discovery. You'll be amazed at what you will discover about yourself when you come in. You'll come to music probably, first of all, because you love playing an instrument. Um, and here we will nurture that with you. Um, and if you really want to specialize, we will give you 
a huge amount of individual tuition, but we will make sure that all of you leave here very competent on your instrument. We have a fabulous um, staff of um, performers and teachers who are actively performing. All the member, original members of the Vanbrook Quartet are here, um, members from the Irish Chamber Orchestra, the Irish Baroque Orchestra, the RTE Concert Orchestra, the Army Band. These are um, among our staff who are working here. Um, and they're all very, very personable and they will work with you to, to get the best out of you while you're here. Playing in ensembles, of course, is the fun side of all of these things. Um, and we have a huge range of ensembles that you will all be involved in. You might be a guitarist. Yes, we have a guitar ensemble, but we'd also hope that if you're a guitarist, that you will play in, that you will sing maybe in Fleischmann Choir or in choral. Um, you, the, you have opportunities to play in our symphonic wind ensemble. There's a jazz band, a baroque ensemble, where the only uh, conservatory in the country that can field a full symphony orchestra without our staff sitting in um, opera platform, traditional music ensemble, percussion ensemble, brass ensemble, symphonic wind ensemble. Um, the opportunities are endless. Uh, you may play one more than one instrument or you may play traditional Irish music and you may also play classical music. Don't feel that this limits you to one or other. We will give you opportunities on both. Um, we also um, provide opportunities to work side by side um, and put on special performance projects and students have the opportunity for mentoring programs with such as the Irish Baroque en Ensemble. There's um, apprenticeships available with those, the National Symphony Orchestra, and again, um, we've run projects with members of the ICO here. We're always happy to hear from you. If you're just wondering what would it be like with, with a teacher down here, you're welcome to contact us and we'll set you up with a consultation lesson with any of our teachers. Um, and, you know, that's without prejudice. You might decide you want to do something else or study with another teacher, and that's no problem either. Um, and to help you in all of this, you know, we have these wonderful practice rooms where you can come and you can book rooms on a live system here and, and practice on our wonderful pianos and in a wonderfully reverberant spaces. And of course, we provide you with coach accompaniment throughout. So an accompanist is not somebody who turns up for your exam. We'll, this is somebody that you will work with throughout the term and you learn so much more working in this way. We will provide you with lots of opportunities for informal and formal performance so that you can discover the sort of performer that you want to be. And of course, whether you're going to be a teacher, performer, um, um, the various experiences that you will get here will inform all of those. As I say, it's a real voyage of discovery. Come with us, you'll be amazed at what you will discover. You might come in as a performer and go out as a composer, conductor, um, into music technology. Um, the opportunities are all there. And of course, the, because we're here with, you know, there's about 500 full-time students here in this building. Um, opportunities aren't just related to the BMOs course, you will find yourself collaborating with um, students in the other degree programs as well, and um, be it playing for the songwriting class in the in the BMOs or uh, theatre performance with the music, um, with the music theatre students. Um, so come visit us, we hope to see you here. I'll hand you back. Thanks, Joan. So I'm introducing Gabriella Meyer now. Gabriella is um, head of keyboard studies here at the school, but she also is the Erasmus coordinator for our programs. So Gabriella. Thank you. Um, so as you can see here, we have a very vibrant um, partnerships with um, a lot of um, conservatories in Europe and um, at the heart of who we are is a conservatory type school, which means that the emphasis is on practical training and excellence. And uh, so we have over 35 partners across Europe from north to south and east to west. Um, and this is very exciting because in addition to students being allowed uh, to go abroad on a mobility, which, we, which means that they could go abroad for one or two semesters, we also have um, other ways of um, experiencing um, the international dimension. 
One of them is um, having intensive projects. Um, so this is where uh, students um, can go abroad for one week and um, gain a five credit um, certification on something like entrepreneurship in the arts or collaborative research um, or um, anything from interdisciplinary work uh, or musical theater or something like this. Um, also, we have uh, foreign students coming here, which is another way of um, making mm -hmm. friends and uh, experiencing another culture. And we also have staff mobilities, which means that we have international um, staff members from other uh, conservatories that come and give master classes here. In addition to, um, to that, we also have um, modules that are from other um, courses in CSM and MTU. Um, and in particular, um, uh, there's entrepreneurship, there's art, there's multimedia, uh, languages, maths, um, lighting design, um, arranging, all of these things are available. So um, it's almost like um, going shopping with a basket and a lot of people are very, very excited about being able to really make the um, uh, degree their own in terms of the combination that they choose. Um, in particularly, we also have um, Barry Douglas, who is a concert pianist famous um, in the world, and he comes and records here. Um, uh, he was very recently um, here again giving master classes. He actually is an adjunct faculty in the Department of Keyboard Studies. Um, he uh, gave a wonderful performance with the CSM uh, Fleischmann Orchestra um, in um, with the Rachmaninoff Second Concerto, and then taught several of our specialized students. Um, and it's he he returns uh, several times a year, so it, we we're very lucky to have him. Um, then uh, the other important thing is the ties with industry. We have mentoring opportunities, as Joan already outlined. Um, we have um, award-winning CSM ensembles. Um, it, there's a lot of preparation for careers after college in terms of um, either going into specific careers or a postgraduate study. We have a master's in uh, performance conducting and composition as well as commercial composition. We also have a master's in uh, music and technology and PhD. So it's possible also to um, get tr training in research already from the undergraduate, um, there's an undergraduate thesis as well as a, PhD, uh, a master's and PhD by research. Um, as Maria already said, we're recognized by the Teaching Council and um, the course is um, highly acceptable for entry to any postgraduate course internationally and our students have gone abroad um, and uh, elsewhere in Ireland as well in terms of accessing a variety of specialisms from um, music therapy to performance to conducting and so forth. Um, I will hand over back to Maria now to uh, talk you through the application process. Thank you. Thank you, Gabriella. Yeah, so just to follow up, I suppose, uh, a question there in the chat quickly, uh, and also uh, Gabriella made reference to it. Um, so, you know, we are very invested in making sure that you have uh, all of the skills in your toolbox that you need to support yourself after you leave, um, after you leave your course. Many people uh, make the decision to go on to do a master's, either professional master's in education or a master's in one of our uh, seven masters here in the School of Music. Um, so that's your decision. But we are, I suppose, we are embedding those skills early on in your undergraduate program. So if you decide that you want to become a music therapist later on, we give you an introduction to music therapy before you leave. You have an opportunity to take some education modules before you leave so that you get a taste through all these things so that you're not stepping off into the wide blue um, when you finish your degree thinking, oh, gee, I don't know what I want to do next. I think I want to be a teacher, but I'm not really sure because I've had no opportunity to try out these things or to be, you know, stand in front of a class and try out and see do I like it so we're we're really concerned I suppose that you um, have a very good experience here educationally as well as musically as well as socially uh, while you're in the school and it's a really vibrant community it's a lovely group of people um, I think we have a very disparate um, catchment we have a lot of people from all over the country in Ireland so it wouldn't be just everybody from Cork and um, not that there's anything wrong with people from Cork but they it wouldn't just be local and um, we tend to draw very 
widely from across the country and into Northern Ireland, also it's the UK. We have a lot of European people coming here um, to study. They like the idea of a small city and a conservatory at the city centre at Cultural Hub. And we have an awful lot of uh, Erasmus exchange in and out, which gives a really uh, nice colour, I suppose, to the student experience um, here. So the application process, how do I get in? So you need to make sure that MT936 is on your CAO form before the 1st of February. It's a restricted access course. They all are in School of Music. All of the courses are the same. So you need to make sure that you have made your application, created your profile on CAO um, before the 1st of February and um, that you have the codes down. You can change the order of preference after that, but you cannot, um, you can't, um, apply for the course if you haven't created your profile before the 1st of February. It's really, really important um, to do that. In March then you are called for an instrumental assessment and a written paper. And if you want to have a look at the written paper, it's nothing you won't have seen before. We're looking for potential all the time. So you can have a look at the sample paper is on the CSM website and also on the MTU website. Um, so just have a look at that. Um, there, you know, there isn't anything you won't have seen before. You're not negatively marked if you get term terminology wrong we're looking for you know your experience and what you hear so write it in your own words um, our calculation of marks again um, similar to the other courses is based on your instrumental assessment or sorry your assessment for entry to the course your written and instrumental assessment so you get you can get up to 600 points for your actual entry to the BMOS uh, for your entrance test um, and you just need to um, achieve the minimum requirements for in your leaving search then on top of that um, the other question in the chat was a little bit around two instruments. So if you are a trad fiddle player and maybe a violinist or, you know, you play clarinet and maybe, you know, um, something else, piano, then um, you are calculated, uh, you are considered as two separate entries for that. So you have a, a, a bank of marks that come from one assessment and a bank of marks come from the other assessment uh, in the two different instruments. You do your written paper once um, and that mark is added to both assessments and then you're offered whichever is the higher of the two or you're ranked based on your the higher of your two assessments. You get feedback at the um, earliest or the latest time um, in early June before your leaving cert starts so that you can kind of get um, a feel of, you know, what you what you really think at that stage before you head into your exams you can change your mind up to the 1st of July again uh, on CAO as as before for mature assessments for anybody who's a mature student you can um you can audition the same as everybody else you apply through CAO um and you will uh, be offered a place in July um, so you should know in July whether you have a place on the on the, the mature program or not. Uh, it's the same program for the undergraduates, but just the, the, the door into it is is slightly different. So that's the um, the entrance test. I suppose we will talk a little bit more about that at the um, Instagram session on the 20th of January at five o'clock. So if you have any specific questions, please feel free to put them into the chat or, you know, come along to that and we will go through the, the entrance a little bit more, a little bit more detail on what's involved in the various instrumental assessments, because I know that sometimes uh, we get a lot of questions around scales and, um, you know, different um, different methods of a, um, of grading yourself, I suppose, in terms of grade six and so forth for your instruments. So okay. there was a question there in the chat that I was going to answer, um, and it's about how experienced you have to be on your instrument. So we're not really looking for um, the certificate of, okay, I've done grade six or seven or eight. We're looking for the actual uh, playing standards. So some people might have actually loved it and done it for years and not maybe taken an exam. We're looking at the actual audition and potential. Normally, it's relatively, if you look at a, a recognized syllabus, it's um, around grade six, um, and that's a, a starting point. And then um, there is a lot of information on our website specifically about um, what uh, instrumental audition is. And so if you, if you go there, you will find a lot of uh, answers to frequently asked questions. Uh, and again, then come, come along to the Instagram session on the 20th. Yeah. Okay. So just... I suppose maybe a concern for a lot of people applying is um, is the 
opportunities, I suppose, presented by being a student of MTU. If you could advance the next uh, slide there, Gabriella, that would be great. Um, so there, as I mentioned previously, this free choice module from any other program in MTU, there are a lot of uh, college societies and clubs. Tom mentioned a few of these already. There's the most amazing sports facility has just opened in the arena out in MTU. Fantastic um, facility there um, for MTU students. Well, for anybody really, but you get priority uh, use of that particular facility. It's very easy, bus access from uh, City Centre to Bishopstown to access that. Access to student services, medical service, counselling, um, career service. Gabriella mentioned this already. They get a lot of careers information, uh, particularly in final year. Um, student life, it's a fantastic place. Students seem to be very happy. A lot of them have accommodation around the college here in the city centre. It's not college accommodation, but it's um, it's very nice accommodation in various apartment blocks and so forth. Um, I mentioned the gorgeous sports campus and the arena and the athletics um, facilities and CIT, also rowing teams and so forth. I'm sure you're all familiar with, you know, the powerlifting clubs and all the various clubs that are have won huge awards um, in European uh, competitions and in the Olympics, obviously, as well. The MTU Society, this is a really great uh, trad society and the Musical Society also are very active here in the school. Um, we encourage students to get involved in extracurricular activity. And actually, I think we don't need to give them a whole lot of encouragement because music students tend to be a very they have a, a very um, transferable skill in that, you know, people are always looking for musicians and um, there are gigs uh, offered, there are opportunities offered, there's a lot of class Plus, uh, cross collaboration going on um, across the college that we're not even aware of actually. Um, so it's really, really nice, uh, nice place to be, nice place to be a student and fantastic place to work from ourselves. Um, and Joan mentioned already the professional opportunities with the mentoring programs with the um, professional orchestras and bands and ensembles. So the accommodation link is there if you want to have a look at it. Um, it's um, you know, the accommodation, uh, as I said, is in the city centre here. So there is some help available through the CIT uh, accommodation office. We are MTU, but I suppose some of our um, some of our links are still have the CIT, um, you know, uh, old historical stuff there. So it is the same, um, but it's just uh, transferring across. So don't be worried about that. Um, so. Just to finish up, thank you very much for your attention. Thanks to Gabriella and Joan um, for coming along as well. MT936 is BMOS at Cork School of Music. Make sure you have it on your CAO before the 1st of February. Thank you, everybody. That's great. Thanks, Emil Maria, and thank you to Gabriella and, and Joan. Just um, what, one quick question, possibly um, before you go, um, uh, the question that came in, uh, do um, applicants need to have Leave Insert Music to apply to the Bachelor of Music programme? No, Absolutely. you don't have to. It does help. Sorry, Joan. <laughs> right over it. it does help, but you don't have to have it. No, um, but you, you definitely do need to be able to read music um, reasonably fluently um, to do it. But no, you don't have to have music. Sorry, Joan. Great. Great. Thanks, Emil, for that, Maria. Much appreciated. Great. Um, we'll move on now to our um, next undergraduate programme, which is the BA in Musical Theatre. And I'd like to welcome Irene O'Mara and David Hayes. They're both course coordinators on the programme and they'll be delivering uh, the presentation. So Irene and Dave, in your own time, thank you so much. Thanks, Tom. Um, welcome, everybody. And hello. Good evening. Hi, Irene. Hi, Dave. How are you? So I'm going to share my screen here as well. And we have another slideshow for you guys um, specifically on our musical theatre course here at the School of Music. So thanks to my colleagues already for talking at, um, at great lengths about the fantastic facilities that we have here um, at CSM. And we are also blessed to have that um, as part of the musical theatre course, which is the newest um, undergraduate programme at the School of Music. Um, Just before so you start. Uh, yeah. if, if to those of you who have been uh, on the webinar since seven, uh, fair play to you. And for those of you who are just joining and wanted to catch uh, musical theatre, fair play to you also. I mean, you're all very welcome. And hello and good evening to Abby, Caitlin, Catherine, Kira, Daniel, Eva, Grace, Jamie, Mary, Miriam, Pina, Rebecca, Rina, and Sophia. Brilliant. 
so yeah, so we're here to talk about the BA Musical Theatre course, which is our four level, um, four year level eight honours degree. And we've two semesters every academic year with all the core subjects that you would hope to see on a musical theatre course, namely that we're training you to be triple threat performers. So you're getting modules in acting, dance, singing, repertory studies and ensemble. And we'll go into them in just a little bit more detail and tell you what they entail. So um. I'll, I'll run through uh, from acting to begin with. Acting is the module that you would take with me if you come in in first year. And um, it runs all the way through the four years of the program. And we take you through all the basics in terms of working as an ensemble, working with different practitioners and um, from like Stanislavski or Chekhov might be different practitioners that you hear. You start to work on monologues and then you're putting scene work together. And then as you kind of progress through the years, it starts to take to kind of collaborate with acting through song as well. And you start to put on bigger chunks of text altogether. So you get lots of training in there and um, in the first couple of years, and then you're building that toward performance in the second year, in the, in the third and fourth years. You also have modules in dance and in dance, you will be covering the, the kind of three main training areas that you would get, uh, which is ballet, tap and jazz. And you get contact with um, a couple of different teachers for that um, every semester as well, which is great. Um, our dance hours has, have in, uh, increased over the last couple of years as well, thanks to um, a lot of uh, requests from our students. So we're delighted to be able to offer even more contact time on that per week as well. Um, in addition to that, you also um, have a singing module, which in the first year of the course, you have two singing teachers, a legit singing teacher and a contemporary teacher. And then as you progress into second year, it also encapsulates a kind of a group singing class where you have the opportunity to sing in front of your classmates with um, a teacher and a repetitor um, to practice your kind of rep within that as well. Um, the one of the other modules that we have then as part of the core uh, modules is repertory studies. And this is sort of your um, musicianship history and uh, ensemble singing um, module and um, that kind of gives you an overview of, of where musical theatre came from, how it evolved over time. And then you're also um, developing your kind of uh, aural and musicianship skills in terms of reading music as well as um, learning to sing together practically as a group, as a chorus. And that then sets the foundations really well for us um, to, to work in ensemble module. I'll let Dave talk about this as is, is his module. <laughs> so uh, uh, ensemble is where we put all of that together. Uh, so we start in first year and we, we start with, uh, at a very elementary level of understanding musical theatre and singing and the whole notion of acting through song uh, and what that, what that actually means, but also what it actually means in practice and when to to lay onto a note a bit more, when to pull back a tiny bit, where all about intent, understanding intent, it isn't always entirely obvious, and really dealing with texts and lyrics, even though we're in a singing uh, medium. And, uh, and then we begin to move to put stuff on the floor and people having to hit marks. And then we move to, so including stagecraft, and then we begin to, uh, ensemble begins to, uh, embrace choreography and direction and eventually we end up with all three disciplines so we end up with three lectures three three different lecturers at the one time in taking ensemble classes and in fact three different ensemble classes happening at the one time and and this brings us to kind of one of the first real points of difference between ourselves and our sister courses in the school of music um where our, our course, even though you have your individual studies, as Irene has just pointed out in the disciplines, um, at the same time, we are an ensemble industry and that's where that's ultimately where we're heading for. Uh, and it's all about working as part of that team, that company, that ensemble. Um, and uh, so every week we work together in our individual classes with our 20, 24 students, which is roughly what we have in each um, of our now four years. Uh, but also we combine, um, we have third years and fourth years working on certain routines. We have first years and second years working on certain routines. We have all the men working on certain routines. Um, and we have um, dance routines that are uh, for the girls only are, uh, and so on. And, uh, and there's a huge cross section. And obviously as we progress through the various uh, semesters, uh, the, the level of complexity and difficulty and of material increases, uh, uh, as well as your ability to triple threat all of these things mm. simultaneously. 
So it's, it's never a dull moment here, as you might be guessing right. Uh, right. on the musical theater course. So for those of you who are very sharp, you might notice that that's only 25 credits. Um, and overall, you would you would usually have 60 credits per year, which means we have five credits per semester. So in years two, three and four, you have the option then of choosing an elective module. So you can kind of add and pepper in a little bit more um something else. So we have a lot of options here in terms of what you can choose. And some of these modules run as part of the drama degree, which you might have heard earlier on. And then some of them are specific to the musical theatre course as well. So if you're interested in looking at design or directing, you can also study a little bit further about acting in the media, or if you want to know a little bit more about behind the scenes, stage management, directing, script writing. And then a lot of our musical theatre students are also really interested in pursuing further development of their, their core skills. So we do have more dance elective modules available, performance development, which could be areas of singing or um, costume portfolio, design portfolio, musical direction if you're interested in becoming a, an MD, um, or then if you're interested also in going into areas of education, there's also options there for you to explore, as well as a work placement module that, that can exist as well for you to take um, experience outside of the college and working with the professional company director, um, etc. So there's lots of choices there and they come in from years two, three and four. So we'll just go through the, the kind of years just very briefly year to year so you can kind of see the, the structure and what you can hope to expect kind of over the course of the program itself. So as I said, you, you'll always have your kind of five core subjects. And then in first year, unfortunately, you don't get to choose an elective. Um, in first semester, every student takes this extra elective called the CIT module or the creation, creativity, innovation and technology module. Am I correct in saying that? Yeah. Um, which obviously was was from our old CIT name. We'll have to come up with a new MTU version of that module, I think. And then in semester two, you're looking at technical theatre, which is a mandatory module for all students, which gives you an overview of what it's like to work inside a theatre. It's a really important module. You learn what a light is, what a sound is, how you plug things in, how you put on radio mics, what, a, you know, what way the stage faces, where the audience is, et cetera. It's, it's, it's very straightforward, and um, but it also gives you great accreditation in stage pass, which allows you to work in any theatre in the country, which is great. And there's no formal production at the end of first year, but we will have end of semester recitals, um, which would be open to attendance from, uh, from the public. Yeah. And then in year two, it's the same um, five core subjects and you can choose one elective from that list I showed you before. And at the end of semester two, we'll be going into a production, um, which I might let Dave speak to a little bit more, maybe at the end of year two. We're looking at maybe something something bigger than recitals. Yeah. So um, first thing to say is that the photographs that you're looking at are all our gang. Um, we, are, we have 81 uh, deadly serious musical theatre students and uh, 16 deadly serious musical theatre uh, lecturers who are all practitioners too. So it's it's really one big musical theatre melting pot. Um, and uh, we try to take uh, uh, as many performance opportunities as we can, both inside the college and outside the college. So we've performed at festivals. Um, we have performed in the Opera House. We did our end of year. Our first really big public performance was last June in the Cork Opera House, which was a fairly epic affair. Um, but also within the college, we look to perform now uh, in the variety of the performance spaces that you've already heard about several times. So we won't go through that again, um, both theatrical and non-theatrical spaces that we have. We're happy to perform wherever. Uh, and at the end of year, so the way the performance, the formal end of year performances will go at the end of year one we'll have a recital as Irene said at the end of year two we will have a staged uh, concert semi-staged production uh, and then in years uh, the same same again in year three uh, and then by the time we get to year four it's your fully fledged musical theatre production so in that regard our current fourth years are about to head to the Everyman Theatre uh, our term will commence next Monday and then they will stop and they will have four weeks of intensive industry musical theatre rehearsals, uh, nine to six every day. And then they will be moving in for uh, a weekend of tech and a proper uh, uh, professional run in the theatre, which is fantastic. So that's the kind of the, the outline of the, the formal performance uh, opportunities, but also um, we're, we're, we are into all the crossover between the degrees in a big way, particularly on musical theatre. So 
our students have also uh, performed with people who are uh, coming from industry who are doing their masters. So we had uh, Colin O'Regan, currently MD of Book of Mormon in the West End, uh, who was himself a past pupil of the Cork School of Music, uh, and our musical theatre students performed with him uh, in two of his concerts. One was a, a, a small eight-hander, uh, and the other was a spectacular uh, hour of the Hunchback of Notre Dame with a 25-piece choir and a 15-piece orchestra and column conducting. Um, and then more recently, uh, the very fabulous current Phantom of the Opera, uh, our finest leading man, Killian Donnelly, just completed his master's here with us in the Cork School of Music. Uh, and our MT students got to perform with him in uh, two of his performances at the school, which was amazing. Uh, so yeah, plenty of performance every day of the week. Yeah. And then just even to delve a little bit deeper into year four, so you, you have this uh, musical production happening in, in semester one, and then in semester two of year four, we're really focusing on, on creating your sort of graduate portfolio for leaving. So um, you're you're looking at, at a module in each of your separate disciplines, which you have the opportunity to specialize in and take extra credits in. So you could take an apex module in acting, you could take an apex module in dance or an apex module in singing, if you felt you had a strength in one of those areas and create a performance that would show showcase the best of your ability as you kind of make the bridge out into the professional industry. And we're also delighted to say at this point that um, our graduates are going to be members of Spotlight, um, which is one of the premier kind of casting websites out there. So um, they will have profiles available to them um, if should they wish to join um, at the end of the year and um, where they can put all the material that they create as part of the second semester. Um, in addition, uh, to our kind of core work, we're also really delighted to have had a very successful, nearly four years at this stage, running of what we call our Friday weekly industry workshops, where every Friday we don't have any scheduled classes as such, but we um, leave a gap in the calendar for um, whatever professionals are visiting Cork or happen to be visiting the School of Music to do work, to um, work with our students um, in lots of different capacities from acting workshops, dance workshops, um, uh, trialing out different um, productions, I suppose, maybe. Dave, anyone want to jump in yeah. here? So, um, so every Friday, every Friday we have uh, a performer of note uh, from, from the musical theatre industry comes in and runs workshops for our students, uh, spends kind of two hours and then questions and answers afterwards, and then another two hours of questions and answers afterwards. Um, and uh, we've had quite an array of uh, practitioners and then also we've we've heavily leaned in the world of dance mm -hmm. um uh, particularly in the last 12 months it has been relentlessly dance which is fantastic because we're always trying to uh, pump up the dance hours which is uh, and and again getting to interface with such a so many different styles of dance including ballet most recently um uh, but also contemporary and jazz and commercial uh, that our that our students kind of eat this of a Friday, which is fantastic. Uh, and we have two different types of workshops, I guess, on the BAMT. One is that that we've just spoken about, but the other is where we're actually assisting the industry, which is a really fantastic kind of uh, innovation. Um, we have helped in the writing of two different, in the development of two uh, industry professional musicals. Uh, and currently our students are working with the creative team for uh, a fairly heavy hitting industry musical that was already a successful book and then a movie uh, and and we are helping the creative team uh, who are fairly international in their scope uh, we are workshopping the material with them and for them uh, and and providing feedback to them so that's a kind of a win-win we have the facilities and the people uh, and uh, and they have the content um, and we're putting those two things together and we're looking to develop ourselves as a kind of a workshopping house in general and uh, we're, we're making good progress in that regard. Yeah, great. And this is a, this is a list of some of the previous professions that we work with, which Dave has touched on a few of, but I'm sure you'll recognize some names there as well. Um, in addition to that, we've also kind of been developing our community. If you're not already sick of musical theater in the day-to-day -day work of the classes, we also like to do things in the evening together sometimes as well. So um, it's been a very tough couple of years in the pandemic, and we've been delighted this year, especially to be able to spend a little bit more time physically together. So you can see some of the events that our students have been involved in on the left. We brought everybody in to watch a, a screen uh, screening of the a film recording we have of Stepping Out from June. So our students got the opportunity to watch themselves perform, which was great. 
Um, we also are lucky to be in receipt of transitions funding from MTU, um, which allowed us to take all of our students on a trip up to the Board Gosh Energy Theatre for a production of My Fair Lady, where we got to meet um, some of the cast and, and dance ensemble as well and talk to them about their experience. Um, and we also performed as part of Finding a Voice Festival um, last year in Clonmel as well. We are also delighted to be uh, a member of the European Musical Theatre Network as well, which um, Dave had the experience of yeah. traveling to recently. So, so this is an amazing thing. So, uh, and this is a really serious development, actually. So one of the upshots of Brexit for us is that we are now the only naturally speaking uh, level eight honours musical theatre state funded course in actually, actually, Europe. So, so um, the European Musical Theatre Network has reached out to us and we were delighted. They came and visited us last May. Uh, I went to Amsterdam in June and I went to Germany in November and there are now six colleges. So there is a college in Gothenburg in Sweden. There is a college in Vienna. There is a college in Essen in Germany. Uh, uh, the, the Lucia Martha's College in Amsterdam and uh, a college in Spain and the six colleges are looking to get to work together, both for staff and also students. So uh, looking at how we teach and what we should be teaching and methods of teaching and uh, pedagogies in that regard, but and, and then looking to create uh, Erasmus exchanges for our students and Erasmus exchange programs. Um, and one that really excites me is the fact that we might be able to, to develop um, five credit modules with this network, whereby um, it might be uh, what is termed blended learning, that you might do five weeks learning at home in your home country, and then everyone may travel to one of the six colleges, spend, I don't know, 10 days together, and then re um, return back home and, uh, you know, uh, write up and reflect and review and uh, um, conclude uh, and that that might become an actual module or go to one of the other colleges and spend a semester there. Um, uh, but we're excited because we have two big events coming up in that regard. So in uh, at Easter, the week before Easter, we are attending, all six colleges are attending in person, which is um, a first for us uh, with a cohort of students in Amsterdam. Uh, and then next November, all the, the, the teachers from all six colleges are coming to us we're hosting them um, and they'll all be interfacing and working with our students, which we can't wait for. So that's kind of amazing. The other thing that's the reason that this is really important is we always look to London and we always look to Broadway and, and we need to expand our horizons. When I visited Germany in November, it was uh, quite surprising for me to see the level of uh, musical theatre uh, industry uh, that, and actually state supported musical theatre industry that's that's prevalent in in Germany and to discover that between Germany and um, Netherlands and uh, also particularly um, in Spain there is a phenomenal amount of musical theatre productions um, some working through English some working through whatever the uh, national language is um, and that's not something we should be uh, dissing and we should be quite the opposite embracing so one of the things that happened when we were in germany in november was we went to see starlight express we uh, got great airtime with the creative team we nearly had two whole days with them from starlight express um and they were explaining to us you know that uh, the majority of the cast from starlight express has heretofore come from the uk um, and they spend you know six weeks uh, six days a week learning to skate first and then they learn the show phonetically so uh, there's a huge market that's available for us you know if if we look in that direction uh to the to mainland europe and not only to london and across to broadway so huge connections are being made in that regard uh, that regard um for our for our college for our course in particular and most importantly for our students so yeah really looking forward to those two developments in April and November. 
Yeah, so watch this space and we'll tell you more about it as time goes on. Um, so you must be wondering at this point, um, how do you get in? Well, but first, just to take a little pit stop to tell you, um, Dave mentioned it earlier that our, our third and fourth years are involved in our first fully fledged production of The Adams Family, which is happening at the end of February in the Everyman Court. So tickets are on sale now and it will be cast from our third and fourth year group, along with a live band from the BA and Pop Music and BMOs as well, um, with musical director Mr. David Hayes in in attendance along with our director which is our um staff member christine scarry as a uh, director and choreographer stephen o'regan for those of you who might know his name as well and so you must be wondering at this point how you get in so um obviously we would love to see you apply through the cao um by the first of february with the code mt938 and just like all the courses at the school of music it is entrance by audition only and marked out of 600 so your matriculation requirements are kind of the same across all the courses so um, just as it kind of says there in at least six subjects h5 and two and ordinary six or h7 and four other and one of them has to be in english or in irish and then it's the same we can consider those qualifications um from a levels or or european equivalents etc fetac level five and six and you can also apply as a mature candidate as well in terms of your audition requirements it's a two prong application so once you apply through the cao you'll get details from us about submitting the first part of your audition which is a video submission so we'll be looking for a video submission for your acting audition which is a three minute monologue from a published play or musical and you just need to record yourself in, on video for that and submit it and then also a video of two contrasting solo musical theater songs and you can do that to a backing track or to a piano accompaniment and the deadline for that will be approximately Friday the 24th of February 2023 but they will email you the details of that once you apply through the CAO. Then the second part of the audition um, will be the in-person audition which will comprise of a dance audition which is a group workshop where you'll be led by um, a dance teacher through a warm-up and to learn a piece of choreography which you will present then at the end of that audition um, and, and in addition then you'll have an acting workshop which is not um, unlike the workshop for the drama degree it'll be uh, similarly about 45 minutes and it's a group ensemble workshop and we're looking to um, to warm up and to see how that you can work as an ensemble and play together um, and create maybe little moments of of theatre for us to to, to observe um, and this will also be coupled with a short individual interview on the day as well um, where we're just learning want to learn a little bit more about you I suppose and why you're interested in coming to study musical theatre at the School of Music. So one of the big questions that we always get asked and I think this question actually came up in the chat is you know um, you might be um, really trained in singing and you might have been to some some drama classes but you may not have lots of skill in dance and you might be worried about that in the audition. So what we would often say is that what we're looking for is candidates who are good or great in two of the areas and teachable in the third. So we're not looking for you to already be a triple threat, but um, we're looking to see that you have good skills in at least two of the areas and that you have teachable qualities in the third. So if you have time between now and the auditions and you wanted to take a dance class or two or take an acting class or two or a singing class or two, that would benefit you, but it's not going to um, necessarily um, disadvantage you if you have skills in the other two areas. Yeah. And the audition dates for the in-person, sorry to say as well, are Saturday and Sunday, the 12th of Mar uh, 11th and 12th of March um, this year as well. Yeah. Anything to add there, Dave? Yes. Um, so just uh, to summarize the the uh, musical theatre course in Cork. Well, first of all, the Cork School of Music is an amazing place. Uh, I can uh, evidence this from my own personal journey which saw me travel up and down from Dublin for five years in a row sometimes twice a week uh, uh, when I finally moved on to the musical theatre course uh, the pull was even stronger and we finally moved to Waterford so we're only an hour and a half away and now as opposed to two hours seven minutes and 35 seconds um, but uh, uh, we, we, we work hard and we play hard there's a beautifully informal atmosphere on our course but at the same time we're deadly serious about what we do um, and, and there's a real draw for 
the 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 art form that is musical theatre and the disciplines that are required to succeed at it uh, and have a and have a career of in in some aspect of it, whether that's you know on stage in creation in performing in teching in you know in presenting in radio in theatre in TV whatever. And there are so many outcomes that you can and roles you can take from this from this course, um, uh, eventing event management whatever. Like it's because because you understand how these things all work by the time you finished. Uh, and as Irene says, you don't have to be a triple triple threat coming in. We're, you'll be that leaving, we hope. Yeah, we're all starting at the same level. Everybody's starting at the beginning and we're working through it together. So what we would say is if you are passionate about musical theatre and you want to come, you're thinking about coming to study, stick us down on your CAO and come to the audition and let us, let's meet you and let's have a conversation about it. Um, one of the other questions that came in as well was, um, can you take, can you audition for this as well as the drama degree? And the answer is yes, you can. Um, and we will endeavour to schedule you at different times so that they don't overlap. So that is possible. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And we are Instagramming on Friday, are we? Yes, we are Instagramming on Friday. We're doing an Instagram live at six o'clock on Friday. Um, and this is our these are our details here. If you want to have a little look, we are on Facebook and we are on Instagram. Um, and there are email addresses. If you do want to get in touch, we are also open to your questions. If you want to ask us any about the course um, at any point between now and auditions. Or yeah, you can. Yeah, anytime. And, and yeah, no problem. Just send us a mail and we'll get back to you. Yeah, brilliant. So if you have any questions, fire them in. There have been a few in the chat, but if there's anything else, work away. Irene, I have one that, um, that, that had come in a little earlier. Um, yeah. There's uh, someone who's interested in, in studying musical theatre and, and looking at the course here um, at MTU Cox School of Music, and then also, let's say, looking at other courses um, around the country um, and, it, and to London as well. Um, what, what kind of uh, advantages are there over um, our particular course here at uh, Cork School of Music that you might not get, say, um, elsewhere in the country or maybe over in London as well? Uh, what are the sort of things um, that might um, uh, attract someone here? Can I take that? Well, I would say that this is the only uh, BA Level 8 Honours Musical Theatre course in Ireland. So it's the only place in Ireland that you can study a four-year degree programme in musical theatre. Dave, you want to? Yes, um, uh, funded by the state, which means you have fee advantages and Susie Grant advantages. And it is the only course that has three sister courses alongside it. It's the only course in a facility such as the Cork School of Music. Um, and, and the other advantage is that you have all the weight of a, of a university uh, backing here in terms of um, uh, uh, student support, student counselling, um, um, financial assistance in terms of then all the society network and structure and um, student uh, extracurricular activities and uh, whether in Bishopstown, which is our main campus or any of the other campuses or in the School of Music itself. So, so it's quite unique uh, in that regard and you won't be sorry you came here. Mm. Amazing. Thank you so much. Um, I don't think any other uh, questions have come in, but of course, uh, there's the upcoming Instagram session uh, with, with David and Irene. Um, but thank you so much. Um, really appreciate your time, uh, David and Irene. Thank you for, for the presentation there. And uh, we're just going to wait a couple of moments and then we're going to start um, at half past uh, eight with the BA in popular music. And uh, my colleague, Deirdre Collins, who's the uh, head of the department, uh, will be leading the conversation there. So huge thanks to David and Irene. And uh, we'll just take a, a brief moment there and we'll start again at half past. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, Irene. And thank you, everybody, for uh, joining with us and staying with us. Thanks, everybody. So Tom, just to say, if we don't um, happen to have Anya on time, I'm happy to just play on myself because I know she's coming from another appointment. No problem at all. No problem. So uh, delighted to, to welcome Deirdre Collins, who's the uh, head of the uh, Pop, Jazz, Trad, Voice and Theatre Studies uh, Department, um, who will lead the presentation on the BA in Popular Music. Thank you, Deirdre. Thank you, Tom. And thanks so much to um, all of the presenters so far. 
um, for giving a really wonderful overview of our courses. And thank you to everybody here who has stayed on till the bitter end to hear about the BA in popular music. And also welcome if you're watching the recording of this back at a later stage. Um, I'm due to co-present with Anya Whelan, who is um, course coordinator uh, on the BAPM. She's actually been examining a um, specialised pop performance gig at half seven uh, in the school, which uh, is a module which I'll fill you on in, in a little bit about in time. Um, so if she joins us, great. And if not, I'll chat away myself. Um, so the first thing to, uh, I suppose, draw your attention to is that you're going to see five course codes here for the BA in popular music. Um, they all lead to the same degree program, but it's just a way of us um, making the, the entry a little bit easier in terms of uh, delineating between um, people on the different instruments when it comes to um, processing the applications. So if you're interested in electric guitar, you enter 931, bass guitar 932, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and immediately I know people will probably have a question, can you um, uh, apply on more than one instrument and yes you absolutely can all you need to do is put down both of the CAO co codes on your um, CAO application and then you'll be sent the information about applying to both of them you'll be scheduled for um, the written paper and the auditions on both of them and you'll get two separate sets of points um, and then it's up to you um, anytime before CAO close the change of mind facility in July um, as to which one you want to put higher on your CAO. And if you have met the, um, the requirements for both, you'll then be offered the, um, the higher of your, um, of your choices. Um, and you'll see that uh, MT935 voice is restricted access. So that is, uh, means the same as on the other courses and that you do need to have your um, application in before the 1st of February. Um, and the reason that this uh, course is, is slightly different is, um, is that the, the applications on voice are always um, larger in numbers. Um, so we do accept late applications on the other four courses, meaning that if you do find us after 1st of February, but everybody who's watching this has obviously already found us. So I would really encourage you to get those um, applications in before the first CAO deadline, which means then that we can process you in, um, in March and April with everybody else. Um, so they are our um our course codes, but they do all lead to um they do all lead to the one degree. Um, in terms of just our um general introduction uh, to the course, um, Tom, you can move on to the next slide there if you wouldn't mind. Um, you will find a lot of the information um, about the facilities and the student services, etc., are all the same as what you've already heard in the um, uh, in the previous um, programs. So I'm not going to go back over all that too much. Um, but just to say that in terms of the um, the facilities we have for popular music, um, we really are very lucky to have. Um, state-of-the-art facilities we have eight dedicated popular music uh, studios which means these are already um, set up uh, round the clock for um, popular music performance so they all have drum kits in them all the time you don't have to lug your own kit around if you're a drummer and um, they all have keyboards they all have amps um, and uh, and little mini desks that you can um, that you can plug into and um, so that is where our, our pop students kind of find their their home in those eight studios and a lot of the teaching happens in these studios as well. Um, you will have seen photographs of our recording studio in some of the previous presentations. Um, this is really you know, a state-of-the-art studio that's in demand by um, professionals all over the, the country and, and further afield, but it is kept for you, for our students, um, to learn um, on the technical modules and also to record um, your own projects in there as well. So it really is a, um, an amazing facility. The course is a full-time uh, course for four years. Um, it's full-time, it's full-on. Um, you have you know, generally five full days a week of um, lectures and your own practice, your own band practice, your own individual practice, um, as well as exercises that you have to do for various modules. So you will find yourself in the school uh, all the time. It's very much a practical course and um, where we're really very much focused on 
um, educating um, performers um, who have that theoret theoretical and, and musicianship background. Um, we really prepare people for the industry, um, but also you will find that um, if you're more interested in the technical aspects of popular music, sound engineering, audio production, et cetera, et cetera, you will be, um, you will also be accommodated. And if you find, people will find that as the years go on, that maybe they find themselves being more interested in production or um, management or or venue work or whatever it might be. So as um, Anya, Anya, who has who has arrived, thank you, Anya, will um, will go through some of the course content shortly, and you'll be able to see how you can actually. Um, I suppose make your own path through to, through the the degree to to kind of find um, to find what suits you. You will be part of a really vibrant and creative community in the School of Music. I think if you've been listening to the previous presentations, you'll understand just quite the the scope of what goes on in the school. And students in in the BA in popular music are very much at the heart of that. And um, there is lots of opportunities for collaboration with the other degrees. And um, if you've just been listening to the presentation about the musical theatre course, um, we had a, a house band for all of the musical theatre uh, pr pr productions last year, which was formed from popular music students. So a certain number of students who were interested in um, this um, uh, air type of, of genre of music uh, went along to lots of musical theatre ensemble classes where they played for rehearsals and then they ended up getting the, the opportunity to um, play in the Cork Opera House accompanying our um, our big uh, musical theatre production last June. So all of those sorts of um, synergies are, are open there um, for you as a as a popular music student. And um, there definitely is that feeling of, of community in the Cork School of Music that we absolutely love. Um, Anya will talk a little bit more about um, the one-to-one -one, uh, tuition that you get as part of the course. Um, we do have regular master classes um, where uh, visiting professionals will come, specialists in various genres or various instruments will come and give additional master classes to our students. And um, we have an annual a &R session where you will find um, uh, you know, a talent scout from a record label coming um, to, to meet students and students will get to, to present some of their work to them and to receive feedback. And that's really a, just a hugely valuable connection that people will use. Um, down the line. Um, we have got the possibility to develop second instrument studies. So there are um, quite a lot of students who are really skilled in, um, in more than one instrument, and they have the, the, the possibility to develop both of those as we go along, whether that be through additional one-to-one -one tuition or also through um, playing in ensembles and, and bands, etc. And um, Anya will talk a little bit more um, about the different um, performance styles and um, that are covered throughout this semester. So Anya, I'll hand over to you if you want to go to a little bit more detail about the course content. Sure. Thank Thanks you. very much, Deirdre. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Anya Whelan, and I am currently the course coordinator for the BA in Popular Music. Um, and it's not just popular music that is covered. So I, I will start by talking about the different genres that we cover over the, the course of the four years. So in first year, we study soul music for the first semester. So that would be artists. And we usually begin with, um, you know, taking you back to the origins of the style. So we find that that is um, really important to understand the historical context of the music that you're performing and the music that evolves over the decades and becomes the music that you probably currently listen to. Um, so in semester one, you would study people like Otis Redding, Wilson Pickett, Booker T and the MGs, Aretha Franklin, Marvin Gaye, and that's your soul semester. So you will study that on your individual instrument or your voice and then you will have the opportunity to put it into more of an ensemble context with your band um, in first year in the first semester and that culminates with a concert at the end of the semester which is effectively your exam and then in the second semester you study funk so I'm sure you've all heard of people like James Brown, um, Dr. John, maybe not as familiar to some of you, uh, The Meters, Average White Band, Chic, again, bring you back to the origins of the style and allowing you to integrate the truly authentic kind of interpretations of, um, of the classics in that, that particular genre. And again, with each passing semester, you get the opportunity, not only in your individual lesson on your instrument with, with, with your one-to-one one-to-one -one, one -one lecture, weekly lesson with, um, so not only in that 
environment, but also then in your band. Um, and your band will have uh, a, a lecture with um, a lecturer who specializes in that kind of music. And then you will also spend quite a lot of time each week rehearsing with your band outside of your lecture time. So there is a, an awful lot of, of performance um, that is part of, of, of this degree. And uh, so that's first year. In second year, you move on then to blues. So artists like Robert Johnson, Lightning Hopkins, Freddie King, Muddy Waters, BB King, all the Kings. Um, so, and again, people like Janice Joplin, um, they're all covered uh, in the repertory studies for each instrument. Um, and then you get the opportunity to perform that style of music or how it has evolved through your ensemble workshop. Uh, so that's the blues semester. Then in semester four, which is the second part of the second year, then you will study rock. So all the, the guitarists get their chance to to really shine with the um, music of people like Jimi Hendrix, Led Zeppelin, uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers, Metallica, anything really, you know, rock is so broad and vast that there's a huge scope for all different styles of playing. Um, so that is first and second year. Then in third year, uh, you have the opportunity to investigate roots and Americana and singer songwriter. So anything that comes under the umbrella of roots, which which basically starts with how blues evolves and sometimes it leans more into an acoustic type of setting. And then in other instances, you, you could take it down the, a country road, if you like. And again, similar to the other years, you get the opportunity to develop those skills further through your ensemble lecture. Um, so that that is third year. Third year really is based around the, the singer, the song and the accompaniment of the song. It's really, really important. So artists like Joni Mitchell, James Taylor, Paul Simon, Van Morrison, Tom Waits, Bonnie Raitt, Carol King, all the classic songwriters um, from from many years ago and right up to the, the current um, the current type of interpretation of that style as well. So you're encouraged to really investigate every style as thoroughly as possible, even though throughout your repertory studies in your popular instrumental classes, um, throughout those studies, you are encouraged to go back to the source, but you're also encouraged to really, you know, stretch out and try and find as, as much and try and integrate the characteristics of the style as much as possible um, through your own personal area of interest within the context of that style. And then in fourth year, um, you have the opportunity to either, we find a lot of our fourth years are either leaning into one of the previous semesters more than, than a general approach to fourth year. So you, you have the opportunity to specialize in your popular, popular instrumental studies in fourth year um, into an area of interest to you. So that can kind of come under the the heading of jazz or of you know maybe more contemporary popular studies or if there's anything that you feel will benefit your own artistry and your own opportunity to to um, gain employment then you're encouraged to really just develop those skills as much as you need in order to prepare you for the industry when when you finish your degree in at the end of your fourth year. So those are the popular instrumental studies. Um, in third year, then you have the opportunity to specialize and you can specialize in areas of performance or songwriting, arranging, music and technology, music direction, community music, music therapy, pedagogy, the teaching of music, or you can develop your second instrumental studies as well in third year. So third and fourth year, you begin to to really specialize in particular areas. And it doesn't mean that you, you can take a back seat from your performance either. If you decide that that's not going to be the, you know, the only route for you, you will still have the opportunity to develop those skills as much as you like, but you know, you, you're more than welcome to, to develop further into the area of music and technology if that is, you know, a, a path or a strand that you are eager to pursue uh, career wise. So there, there are so many different elective modules that, um, that start in the third year of, of your programme. And people, you know, you might decide to get a taste and do a variety of, of different electives and, you know, throughout third year, but then by fourth year, it's really time to, to decide really 
what you're going to to do in terms of your your further career opportunities and there are so many options for you know music degree students at this point and music degree graduates there are so many different options in many uh, areas um so we'll talk a little bit more about that unless maybe Deirdre has spoken to you about it already but uh I hope if I'm if I'm covering ground, dear, you can stop me. Um, I've just come from a, a fantastic performance, actually, for one of our specialised performance students tonight. So she has just uh, completed um, her her performance this evening, and uh, it's great to see people at this point of the degree when when they're in their fourth year, they're really owning their um, their performances and. The performances are very, very high quality. You'll get the opportunity to see a lot of these performances and many of them, many of the past performances are actually on our YouTube channel. So go check them out um, in a variety of styles. What, you know, you'll find something there, whatever your interests, wherever your interests lie, you will find a performance there that uh, that you will really enjoy. So um, that, that series of performances, exams uh, that's still ongoing and we're we're flat out really uh, in the building where we're thriving and it's a it's a busy spot so I would encourage you to check out uh, what we do online whenever you have an opportunity to do so um so yes back to the elective modules so you can specialize in performance songwriting which is a very popular one and uh, we all know that if if there, there would be no industry without the the, the song so it's a it's a really interesting uh, module and it's a very popular one people uh, really enjoy I suppose if, even if they've never written a song before they enjoy un understanding the process and understanding the craft and how to get the most out of your song and we also have people who have you know even released music before they have come to the songwriting module in third year and they can still really develop and understand the the crafting process the editorial process which is really important and how to um i suppose uh you know publicize your work as well and how to collaborate with other musicians on your work it's it's really important um arranging again these modules all start to, to feed into each other when you hit the third year of our program um so songwriting arranging music so you get the opportunity to uh work with uh, maybe string players or a big band or sometimes you can arrange for orchestra as well depending on uh, what level of the arranging that you're that you're doing and uh, we have music and technology we have a wonderful recording studio here um fully equipped uh, an amazing live room one of the biggest that i've been in in ireland or england uh or the any part of the uk um it's a fantastic room it can fit um uh an orchestra you know for recording projects um we also have a fantastic control room and uh, and part it's part of the whole suite of um of the recording studio that we have the recording facility that we have and uh, there's there is some fantastic um fantastic work being done in in that department here and you you know the the employment opportunities out of the technological areas are really increasing um, every year and developing further in, into other areas, not just music, but into all types of audiovisual opportunities and, uh, you know, things like writing for um, for computer games and film, all of this is really, you know, it's essential to understand the music and technology um, world in order to be able to do that and to be part of that world uh, if you're if composition is of interest to you as well. Music direction then is another fascinating, um, fascinating elective module and it trains people who are hoping to lead ensemble sections for think for performance opportunities such as um you know a pit band or a band working on a show or if if playing for musical theater shows is of interest to you then at some point you might be interested in directing one of those ensembles who would play for uh, a musical theater show and we have plenty of students who are very you know working very successfully at a very high level 
now in that industry in the West End and um, you know all throughout the the UK and they you know many of them would have started they would never really have you know done anything like like uh, leading a band or you know until they had done the module with David Hayes who you might have met earlier on um, so that's a fascinating module for anybody who is interested in developing in that direction. Uh, community music, again, there are, you know, so many studies and so many developments have been done in the area of community music, music therapy. Um, so again, many of our students, many of our popular music students are interested in this and it they are, you know, a valuable asset to that community because they go into places like, you know, nursing homes or hospitals or special schools, special education schools, and they bring music to those communities and they bring a whole lot of joy with them. And they always say that they, they get much, so much more back than they can possibly give. So I think that's a really, really lovely, um, lovely thing to, you know, and it's a very special kind of person who, who, becomes a musical therapist, I think. Um, and again, we we encourage people to who have an interest in it to try these modules in third year. And then if they want to further develop in you know that that whole area, then not only can they do it in fourth year, but you know, a lot of our students will go on further and do postgraduate study in these areas as well. Um, music pedagogy. So for any 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 person who would like to be become a music teacher or a music educator, um, you know there are many strands available through uh, the popular music world as well to do that. There are so many music schools now who are looking for um, educators who specialize in popular music, and uh, our students are certainly um, making themselves known in that area as well. Um, and then. As part of the, the elective program that we can offer, um, the elective programs, we, we would encourage people to, to develop a second instrument. Now you, you will take a mandatory auxiliary instrument, regardless of what, what instrument you come in on, you will always have an auxiliary instrument all the way through your degree program for the four years. So for bass, guitar, drums and voice, the auxiliary instrument is keyboard and it's really really essential to have a good working knowledge of keyboard not only to be able to play a few chords but also to understand harmony and harmonic function it's just a really really essential tool to have in your kit um, and for any keys players then who's for whom keys is their first instrument then you take auxiliary drums now that is a mandatory part of your degree your four-year degree but also um, you have the opportunity to develop other instrumental studies um, in third and fourth year. Now, some people, we have a couple of new modules this year, one in acoustic guitar accompaniment, which is great for singers actually, um, who want to accompany themselves on guitar. Um, many, many singers and songwriters in particular um, will will find it easier to to you know maybe do an early morning TV show or a radio program and bring their guitar with them rather than having to you know lug in the, the piano with them. Um, so just basic acoustic skills again for for the things like community music and music therapy. It's it's a very portable instrument to to bring with you in that into that setting as well. So um, even to be able to play you know four chords. You can play so many songs with four chords in commercial music that you know it's it's essential really to to have those skills, um, and we can offer those as further development of instrumental studies outside of your main instrumental study and your auxiliary study. So um, that is you know the opportunity to do that starts in third and fourth starts in third year, and you can continue on into fourth year. Um, now you have. Uh, other opportunities as well, including modules in classical music. So for those of you who are interested in, in teaching, possibly in a secondary school, um, there are modules that you will need to cover during your undergrad in order to be 
um, accepted onto the postgraduate studies in the Masters in Education. So there are a number of modules that you will need to take for that and uh, classical, they cover classical music and Irish traditional music so that you can um, so that you can, you know, understand and have a, a good working knowledge of the junior cert and leaving cert programs for music in secondary school. Um, you can study jazz, you can study musical theatre theatre and drama studies, there, there are so many elective modules across all degrees that, you know, you really have a, a huge choice. So whatever your interests are, or even if you just want to try something for a semester just to, to get a feel for it in third year, then that is actively encouraged, you know, you're, you're encouraged to, to try things in third year and then specialise in fourth year. And not only that can we offer, you know, across our four degree programs well you also have the opportunity to look at courses from the main campus or from any of the other campuses really and if you know if you're still looking for extra choices but i i very few people i suppose very few people really would would need to do that most people are happy to to stay in house and they're so busy anyway in here that uh, it, it's almost more convenient to stay in house and uh, you'll surely find find something that you that you're interested in in our four degree programs so um will i keep going Dee? thanks sonia i think um i think tom if you could move on to the next slide we'll just do a quick kind of a, a summing up um mm -hmm. so anya do feel free to to yeah. jump in here as well sure, but just yeah. i can to... i can talk about um career pathways there yeah yeah i was going to come to that there when the kind of i suppose the industry preparation so if you could just list off i mean we have um there's a, there's a huge range of of areas that people can can go into um do you want to just maybe go through some of those yourself Sure. Yeah. So there are, you know, many, many opportunities, as, as you see here on the slide. So many op performance opportunities in CSM and city venues. So when when you're when you're doing your performance ensemble workshop, you have the opportunity to play in venues such as Cypress Avenue or, you know, sometimes we'll, we'll take it to Collins music um, venue as well. So there are, you know, plenty of opportunities really to, to play outside of the building. We have beautiful uh, venues inside the building as well, but um, you can, you know, you can certainly go further afield and enjoy the opportunity of uh, other venues around the city. Um, I think the gigging opportunities and just the kind of the 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 focus on performance is something that we do really want to um, to emphasize, I suppose. And part of that is the individual tuition that you get on your instrument or your or if you're a singer on your on your voice, which I know we've mentioned a couple of times, but I think it's really important to um, to hammer home because quite a lot of the other um, courses in the country that are offering um, popular music qualifications don't actually give you that one to one tuition. You might be a singer who's you know learning in a group of 25 other singers. Um, whereas with us, you have a, a dedicated individual teacher from the moment that you come through the doors and that's somebody who, you know, gets to know your playing, your technique, your your voice over the course of four years. And it really just is an absolute, um, I think, um, invaluable resource, you know, to have that that ind individual tuition, which which is not only then. Um, you know, on the kind of technical and the repertoire side, but that that person really becomes um, like a, a mentor for you to, you know, to have this kind of um, close contact with with the staff members and our staff really, you know, we've got a we've got a team of about gosh, it must be about 20, 20, 20 plus people on the, um, the the popular music degree, all of whom have amazing careers either, you know, behind them or, or ongoing. Um, Anya herself is uh, in it's a huge demand as a session vocalist. Um, there are so many staff who are who are performing regularly, who are giving master classes in other places, and um, are hugely in demand um, as um, as recording artists as well. And um, so that really is something that I suppose we feel is a really integral um, part of the degree, and then that is supported then by the the professional kind of workshop uh, opportunities, the master classes, A and R sessions that are. Um, that are uh, all part of the of the the education that you get over the four years, and um, 
we want, again, I suppose, just to, to highlight the idea of these cross disciplinary collaborations. Certainly, if you've been, if you've been listening to the, the, the session for the whole evening, um, you hear about the wonderful like range of, of um of opportunities that that are there. And one of the wonderful things um, about the pop degree is how um, supportive students are of each other and each other's kind of performance needs. So say, for example, with the, the this performance series that's happening at the moment where third and fourth year students are, are, um, are, pre are presenting their specialized uh, performance projects, they then pull together bands of their their students, their 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 co-students and their friends to to form uh, their own ensemble to present for them. And it's a really wonderful thing to see that um, students are, you know, they're hopping in and out of different bands and wanting to just get as much performance experience for yourself, but also to be there to support your fellow students in terms of um, of, of giving them what they need to to um to present an amazing recital, which is something that's that's so wonderful to see, and that also crosses over um, uh, from across the degrees as well. So you'll often find in those SPP performances that um, that they pull in, you know, say brass players from the from the BMUS program also to play with them, or the 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 popular music students can go and um, you know provide music for one of the the theatre shows that's happening. So it really is a um, a uh, kind of a wonderful aspect of the course. And um, we've spoken, I suppose, only has spoken at length about the wide um, choice of specialisms, but it really just means that you can kind of build your own um, pathway throughout the course as you develop and as you kind of get a taster for everything and see um, see what way what way you want to go. And um, something that we haven't mentioned already, I'm just really conscious of time, Tom, I know it's nine o'clock, um, is that, that there are Erasmus exchange opportunities on the BAPM programme. So when you get to third year, you can choose um, if you wish to take a semester abroad um, and there are like quite a number of um, of institutions around Europe that we have partnerships with and um, we often have students going to um, going to Rome it's one of the kind of popular colleges that people choose to go to so you can either go for a semester or for the whole of um, third year so that is something that um, can be quite attractive by the time you get to um, to that stage of your studies and um, we have spoken, I suppose, about how the industry preparation is just such a huge part of um, of everything that 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 we do. Um, whether you want to get involved in the industry as a performer, as a session musician, a recording artist, a songwriter, an arranger, um, whether you want to go down the technical route in terms of sound engineering, audio production, or the kind of more administration side, music management, uh, venue management, booking agents, um, all that sort of stuff. And Anya has already mentioned the 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 options that are there in in teaching as well. And the course is recognised by the Teaching Council for. Um, uh, registration as a as a music teacher if you have taken those those modules that um that Anya refers to and um, we also have quite a number of our students who go into the postgrad um uh, sector as well and quite a lot of them will stay and do their um MA with us as opposed to going anywhere else I guess they haven't had enough of their teachers yet and they, they feel like they can get two more years of of lessons out of their teachers they want to stick around and um, so we do have a very very popular um MA in performance also um commercial composition and uh, an MA in music and technology as well and um, so just before we finish I just want to quickly talk about our um application process so all of this is on our website so I'm not going to spend and um, too long um, going over this because there's a very good overview of what's required on the website, but it's um, kind of a two parter. So the first step is to send us a video submission of yourself playing or singing and the requirements for that are um, uh, are up on the website and you once you once you put in your application through the CAO we will contact you um, and tell you what you need to do and the, the submission deadlines for that is um, in early March and then we will see everybody then on the 25th of March in-house for a written paper um, and also you will have a short one-to-one -one, um, session on that day as well where you will meet um, a teacher or two um, from your instrument um, and they will just go through some very quick uh, arrow tests with you so they might sing you a melody and get you to sing it back or clap back a rhythm and then there'll be just a couple of short um, tests on your instrument as well a sight reading um, test and some very easy arrow tests so that's what you have to um, to look forward to with our application process but we are very much open always to taking questions on that through email or through any of our social media accounts it will be it will be kind of sent to the right person and we will we'll get back to you um on, on all of that and then the the matriculation in terms of the minimum requirements are the same as for all the other courses and um it's also quite 
quite uh, common for people to join our course um, slightly later um, so they may not may not come directly from Leaving Cert. So we can also take um, FETAC qualifications into account if, if you don't have um, recent Leaving Cert um, matriculation to, um, to account for. And also if you are a mature student, so that's somebody who's uh, 23 and over, um, you don't have to have either a Leaving Cert or a FETAC qualification. We can assess you just purely on the basis of your audition and that goes for um for all of our all of our courses sorry i should just say that the audition and um, it is just the audition and written paper points that we take into account in terms of ranking the the applicants but everybody does have to have that minimum requirement through the cao whether that be leaving search or fetac but you just don't have to have that minimum requirement if you're a mature applicant over 23. Um, so I think that's us from the pop side. Um, thanks, Anya, for such an in-depth uh, overview of the course. And I'll hand back to Tom. Brilliant. Thanks, Deirdre. And thank you, Anya, especially after such long days of exams uh, to stay on a, 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 until late in the evening. It's much appreciated. I, I'm just going to round up uh, with, with a few points. Um, I think Deirdre has made a, a lot of these. But for those who are uh, thinking of applying, um, firstly, to apply to the CAO by the 1st of February. And just to note that um, all our courses, our undergraduate courses, are restricted access. So that involves an audition or an assessment. And the minimum Leave Insert requirements for those who are coming through the, the Leave Insert system is H5 in two subjects, um, the 06 H7 in four other subjects. Um, and one of these subjects must be um, either English or Irish. And there is no maths uh, requirement. In terms of the auditions and assessments, uh, this is all again up on our website, but just uh, to give a brief um, uh, overview, the BAMT is a mixture of video submissions and auditions. So the, the first date there, the 24th of February, is for those video submissions, and then the weekend of the 11th and 12th of March. Um, further details will be issued to you once you apply to the CAO. And then for the BAPM, there are video submissions, the ARL test and written paper. Uh, again, the video submissions happening on the 10th of March. And as Deirdre mentioned there, the um, the in-person examinations on the 25th of March. The theatre and drama studies, uh, the workshop, audition and interview is on the 11th of March. And then finally, the Bachelor of Music audition and written paper is later than in the on the 25th of March. Again, all those details. And the particular requirements are all up um, on our website, uh, which is uh, csm.mtu.ie. We're also on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram. And if you have any other questions, we'll be running uh, sessions on Instagram. Uh, you can see the various uh, courses there. So Theatre and Drama Studies this Friday at five, followed by Musical Theatre at six. And then the following week on the 20th of uh, January, the Bachelor of Music, the BMUS at five o'clock and then uh, the popular music then at uh, six o'clock thereafter. So thank you very much uh, for joining us uh, this evening for this um, online open evening. Again, our website has a lot of information there um, and do feel free to get in contact if you have any other questions. A huge thank you to all my uh, colleagues uh, who have been on the call and uh, we look forward to seeing you at MTU Cork School of Music very soon. Thank you.